Have you ever made a perfect body butter only to come back to it a few days or weeks later and find that it is transformed into a gloppy oily mess? If so, no worries, that is what we are talking about today. Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are tackling one of the most common questions I get about body butter, which is, will this melt in hot weather? But then also, you know, this melted, how can I fix this? Or you know, this was a lot harder than I expected it to be, or this was a lot softer than I expected to be. These are all things that are related to heat and melting. And so that is what we are talking about today. You know, why it happens and formulation considerations and tips and tricks to avoid it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Marie and I run Humble Bee and Me, both the blog and this YouTube channel. I'm a cosmetic formulator with two diplomas from Formula Botanica in both organic hair care formulation and organic skin care formulation. And I share formulations and formulation information here on my YouTube channel and at humblebeeandme.com and I have for nearly 10 years. If you would like to learn more and potentially sign up for my free DIY skincare for beginners e-course, please make sure you are scrolling down to the description box below this video or just go to humblebeeandme.com. So to start with, we will define body butter because there really is no universally accepted definition for a product labeled body butter. But for the purposes of this video, we are talking about anhydrous products. These are products that don't contain water. They're not emulsified that are primarily comprised of butters. So these can be sort of naturally occurring butters like cocoa butter and shea butter and mango butter, but can also include pseudo butter. So these are hydrogenated products. So if you've ever been you know, shopping for a butter and saw something like blueberry butter and you're like, I had no idea there was such a thing as blueberry butter, that is a hydrogenated product and you'll take a look at the inky and you'll see like hydrogenated vegetable oil in the inky and then you know that that's a pseudo butter. Body butters are typically presented in one of three formats. So kind of format one would be a solid bomb like product. Uh, format two would be a whipped body butter. So something that has been whipped up to be this lovely fluffy body confection. And then format three would be in a bar format and these can be a standalone product or they can be packaged in like a push up tube like a deodorant. Generally speaking, I would say that body butters don't usually contain a high percentage of hardening waxes like beeswax or candle lilac. And when I say large percentage, I'm, I'm talking sort of upwards of 20%. When we start to encounter wax percentages that high, the feel of the product does change into something that we usually associate more with a balm or salve type feel. But do keep in mind, I am saying this as somebody who formulates in Canada for Canadian ambient temperatures. I have spoken with formulators who live in hotter climates who do include hardening waxes in their body butter formulations for improved thermal stability but more on that later. So what does a melted body butter look like? Like how do you know that excess heat was the problem or is the problem? So the most common uh, visual for melted body butter is just when something's completely liquid, right? Like it, it was solid and now it's completely liquid. Depending on the temperature and the formulation though, you might not always just get a completely liquid product. You might have bits of solids with like a, an oil pool in the middle or vice versa. You might have sort of a bunch of oil with some, some like solids maybe floating on top or bobbing around. The product might look separated. So you sometimes get this question, you know, why did my body butter separate? And this is also a function of uh, melting or you can kind of have a, a liquidy bottom with like a, a more solid top. You might also perceive it as being sort of too wet. Generally speaking though, you'll know your body butter won't be quite right. It'll be like too soft or too oily, uh, not quite uniform, but not grainy. I do have a whole video on that as well. Uh, yeah, it's just gonna be like, this isn't what I wanted. So why is a melting body butter a problem? Uh, let's say first things first, it's just not what you wanted. If you had wanted to make a body oil, you would have made a body oil, but you made a body butter and you want it to be buttery and not 
oily. Reason number two a melted body butter can be problematic is that it can get really messy. If the packaging you have chosen isn't designed to hold a liquid, but the thing that you put in it suddenly becomes a liquid, that can make a huge mess. So one uh, example of a container like that would be something like a paperboard container. These can work great for solid products, but if the product liquefies, they're not designed to handle just holding a bunch of liquid oil and it can just leak everywhere and make a huge mess. And then the third challenge with a body butter that melts is that it rarely returns to its desired original state when it re-solidifies. So I talk about this a lot in my video on grainy body butters, but body butters tend to be pretty particular with how they like to be cooled. And that's usually not like melted in the back of a hot car and then tossed around every time you took a turn and then kind of re-solidifying once the air conditioning kicks in. I have never written a formulation that calls for that style of cooling. So a lot of the time, if you have a body butter that melts and then re-solidifies later, it's just not what you wanted. If it was a whipped body butter, it's not gonna be whipped anymore. If it was a body butter bar that had a specific shape, it's definitely not gonna have that shape anymore. And it might've also kind of gone grainy or separated. It can be too soft. It's just, yeah, it has transformed and it did not return to its beautiful original self. So why is your body butter melting? The very brief broad strokes answer is that it got too hot. So with that in mind, let's kind of back up a bit and talk about different temperatures and different formulation considerations when we are creating a body butter. In the world of formulating anhydrous products, three temperatures are really important. So we have temperature number one, human body temperature, temperature number two, ambient or storage temperature, the temperature that the product lives in, and then temperature number three, the melting point of the formulation. We're gonna chat about those three kind of temperatures and temperature ranges and then how they interplay. So the first of those temperatures is human body temperature, which is a relatively constant thing across humanity of approximately 37 degrees Celsius. There's definitely fluctuation, different people will sport sort of slightly different temperatures and your temperature fluctuates throughout the day as well. And then of course, if you are sick and your immune system is kicking in to fight something, that can also go up as well. We call that a fever. Uh, but generally speaking, the human body temperature that uh, you wanna keep in mind when you're formulating is like a reasonably narrow range, right? Like nobody is sporting a 54 degree core temperature and having a good day or a day of any kind. They would probably be dead. The second temperature we wanted to keep in mind is the ambient temperature that the body butter is going to live in. The temperatures that we experience on the planet vary a lot. Uh, just here where I live in the last six months, it has been everywhere from minus 31 to plus 37 degrees Celsius. There's a lot of fluctuation there. However, because human body temperature is a fairly narrow thing, the temperatures that we usually choose to live in are also reasonably narrow. I don't think anybody is setting their furnace to heat their home to like 45 degrees Celsius or really cranking up their air conditioning to turn their dwelling into a giant walk-in refrigerator. If you have the privilege and ability to choose the temperature in which you live, it's also going to be a fairly narrow range. Not as narrow as human body temperature, but reasonably, reasonably narrow. And of course, it is a privilege to be able to really control the temperature of the environment in which you live. And I do want to acknowledge that not everybody has this privilege. And then the third temperature is the melting point of the formulation different body butter formulations, different blends of different fats will have different melting points. And that melting point is a really big part of how we experience the product. So for a couple examples to contextualize different melting points for you, uh, coconut oil melts at about 24 degrees Celsius. So for me, most of the time, coconut oil is solid, but when I put it on the skin, it liquefies almost immediately because body temperature is so much higher than the melting point of coconut oil. Shea butter, on the other hand, melts much closer to body temperature, right around that sort of 37 degrees Celsius mark. And so it is much slower to melt on the skin. You have, you know, you can spread it around 
on the skin and it melts much more slowly. Now, of course, fatty acid composition does play a role in how fats melt on the skin, but generally speaking, the lower the melting point of the body butter of the formulation, the faster it's going to melt once it is put in contact with skin. So those are the three different temperatures that we want to keep in mind as we formulate. How do they interplay? When you are formulating a body butter, its melting point needs to be above the temperature that it's going to be stored at. If it melts below that temperature, it's not going to be buttery, it's, it's going to be an oil. So it needs to be you know, above that ambient storage temperature. Now the upper limit of where you want that melting point to be is usually somewhere around body temperature. As we talked about with coconut oil and shea butter, you know, the lower the melting point of the body butter, the faster it will melt on the skin. But of course the overall formulation also really plays a role in the experience of that body butter melting on the skin. Generally speaking, it's gonna be somewhere around body temperature. If your ambient storage temperature is well below body temperature, you've got quite a lot of room to work in. So where I live, kind of ambient temperature is like 21 degrees Celsius. And then up here we have body temperature at 37 degrees Celsius. So we've got a very roomy 16 degree centigrade uh, play space there. The warmer <laughs> your ambient temperature gets, the smaller that range becomes. So with where I am and the temperatures that I'm dealing with, I could create a body butter formulation that melts at 26 degrees Celsius. And you know, that is five degrees above ambient temperature, so it's still gonna be solid, uh, but it is also 11 degrees below uh, body temperature, so it will melt on the skin really nicely. If your ambient temperature is 26, 27, 28 degrees Celsius, that formulation is going to melt in that ambient temperature because its melting point has been exceeded. So that formulation that was lovely and solid for me at 21 degrees Celsius may not be lovely and solid for you if you live somewhere that is like 28 degrees Celsius. So the general point of that is that if your ambient temperature is generally uh, well above 21 degrees centigrade or below, you're going to need to adjust your body butter formulations with that in mind. Before we move on to talking about the formulation kind of tips and tricks and tweaks that you can make, I did want to touch briefly upon sort of the occurrence of ambient temperature meeting or exceeding body temperature. So unfortunately, as somebody who lives in Canada, this isn't really something I have a lot of experience with. So if this is you, if this is the type of climate that you live in and that you store your products in, you're going to have to do some of your own experiments to figure out how different formulations will perform and what works for you, because that's just really quite far outside of my experience. So how can you modify a formulation so that it functions better in hotter climates, so it's not liquefying on you? Generally speaking, we are looking to raise the melting point of the formulation. And something very important to keep in mind is that if you are raising the melting point of a formulation so that it performs better in hot weather, it is now not going to perform as well in colder temperatures. During the heat wave we experienced here in late June, I did some experiments where I made some whipped body butters that were too hard when I initially made them. They were kind of part of my development process and I was gradually softening them up. I remade them in 30 and 34 degree temperatures and they were far softer and lovelier, but I know from experience that when that temperature drops again, they're going to be too hard and they're not going to apply the way that I want them to. An anhydrous formulation that works well at 31 degrees Celsius does not perform the same way at 21 degrees Celsius. So one of the very first things that I recommend that you do is that you get to know hardeners and butters in your environment. So I have shared a pretty wide variety of different ratio experiments with different hardeners and different butters on my website at humblebeandme.com. I've linked to those in the partner blog post for this, so please make sure you read that. It's linked in the description box below. Do those experiments yourself. Get to know your ingredients. As a formulator, it is absolutely essential that you understand how your ingredients impact your formulations. So handle your cocoa butter, handle your shea butter. What does it feel like? How quickly does it melt? So here where I live, uh, cocoa butter is usually like a snappable hard. I can snap it into pieces. And so if it is soft and kind of like squishy where you live, and you're looking at one of my formulations and I'm using cocoa butter to be the hard thing in my formulation and it isn't hard where you live in your environment, that's not gonna work out very well. So make sure you understand 
how your ingredients are functioning in the temperatures that you're working with them and storing them at. One of the easiest ways to raise the melting point of a body butter formulation is to use more of the solid butters in the formulation and less of the liquid oils. So if you have something like a whipped shea butter that is primarily comprised of shea butter and liquid oil, simply you know, increase the amount of shea butter that you're using and decrease the amount of liquid oils that you're using. If shifting the fat blend alone isn't raising the melting point of the formulation enough for you, or if it's just resulting in substantially more of that ingredient than you wanted and you, you kind of want like a, a little bit of a, a more potent dial to turn, you can look at incorporating ingredients like fatty thickeners. So stearic acid is one of my favorite choices for body butters because stearic acid naturally occurs in a lot of the butters that we use, like cocoa butter and shea butter. So you can choose that like one particular hard fatty acid and add more of it to the formulation to raise its melting point. You can also look at including small amounts of hardening waxes like beeswax and candelilla wax. You can also consider reformulating your body butter to be an emulsified body butter. So if you look at a lot of the body butters that are sold by very large corporations like The Body Shop, their body butters are emulsions because emulsions are substantially more thermally stable so they don't have to worry about it melting on them. And so if you would like to check out a few formulations I have shared for emulsified body butters, I've linked to a couple of those in the partner blog post. Something else to consider, especially if you live somewhere that has uh, very defined summer and winter temperatures, is that maybe body butters are a winter thing for you and you formulate other things in the summer. So what about a product melting during shipping and the mail gets left in the back of an unair conditioned delivery truck on a really hot day? Unfortunately, the best suggestion I have for this is one that I've seen you know, stated on quite a few different like Etsy stores and different Etsy sellers, which is just don't ship body butters when that can happen at times of year that that can happen. Because if you reformulate an anhydrous product so that it won't melt at like 50 degrees Celsius, the use experience <laughs> of that, especially if you know the person that you shipped it to has an air conditioned home that's usually around like 21 degrees Celsius, it's, it's not going to be the body butter experience that you want them to have, unfortunately. All right, so that is why our body butters melt with a look at the different temperatures to keep in mind and different formulation tips, tricks, and considerations while formulating anhydrous body butters. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please remember to check out the full partner blog post linked in the description box below this video. If you live somewhere really hot, I would love to hear your tips and tricks and experiences with formulating anhydrous body butters in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.